Hello, and welcome to the Interpoint Station token tutorial, which will explain to you how the tokens work that we use for our games. Once you're logged in and have launched the game, this will be the screen that greets you. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the top right to the gear wheel and change your display name to your call sign that you use in the game. So in this case, this would be test pilot. And then you want to go to audio video to video display and change the avatar size to names only. So those buttons get smaller here. Then you will need some buttons in the bottom left hand side of your screen, quick roll buttons. You can find those if you go to here, collection next to the gear wheel and select in bar for all of these buttons. And they will appear here in the bottom left, allowing you to easily click all this stuff. Uh, invisible check, etc. Then let's talk about the pilot token. If you click on a token that belongs to you, you will get buttons in the top left hand side. Um, end turn, very simple. At the end of your turn, please press this button and you will appear in the turn order tracker. A trigger button, very important for when you wish to acquire a reserve. You can just type the trigger. Your bonus, which is either 0 to plus 6, and then accuracy, difficulty, depending. And there you go. That's an abysmal roll, a nat 1, unlucky. We got a jockey button, which lets you jockey other mechs very easily. And then uh, your pilot stats and your weapon, but we'll get to weapons later, and a grid check as well if you need it. And that's about it. Let's get to the mech. If you click on the mech, equally you get a bunch of buttons up top. Again, you have an end turn button, very simple. Then you have a list of frame features, which of course this one is an Everest mech, so we have the initiative. Replaceable parts, hyperspec clue injector, and I gave this Everest the Kai Bioplating core bonus just to show things off. So if you click on any of these, it will put the message in chat. And if a background is yellow, that means that message is whispered to you. Nobody else can see them. These everybody can see. And yeah, if you want to activate something, just click it. It comes in chat. Core bonus, as I said, are here as well. And then, uh, yeah. We also have this sort of glossary system. So if you don't know what difficult terrain does, for example, here, you can click that and it'll tell you or how jumping works. That's all no problem. Next up, we've got uh, basics, the basics button, number three. And here you can roll structure damage, overheating, reactor meltdown, overcharges, saves and checks, and get your mech profile. Let's start with structure damage. Just click structure damage, and then whichever structure it is you lost, let's select second. Six and four, click outcome, roll another d6, one, so here a weapon mount is destroyed. If you have an NHP, or your mech has the AI tech and could cascade, please roll this button, and on a one you will cascade. Sometimes it becomes too much hassle to scroll up to get the menu again, so you can just go to basics again. Uh, overheating works basically the same. There you go, exposed. And reactor meltdown just tells you how hard you explode. Overcharge, very important button. Here you can select uh, the amount of overcharges you have already performed this mission. And it will then tell you how much heat you're taking, which of course then you have to put into these bubbles. Uh, if you click on your Mac token, you get three bubbles. The red one or the orange one is the heat bar. So this would need to be eight now, which means we overheat, unlucky. And HP, of course, goes down. And then I will adjust, or if you're familiar with how this works, you can adjust the uh, symbols up top here. The way that works is you open this menu and then you scroll down and then you can hover over these symbols with your mouse and then press a number on your keyboard to adjust them. Uh, these are a lot of new symbols, especially for new players. So I'll help you out when you're starting out, no worries. 
Next up, in basics, we've got saves and checks, which allows you to roll a save or a check. It's gonna ask you for accuracy difficulty. Let's make it accurate. And there you go. If you hover over a number, a result, you can also see the breakdown, which is very handy. And lastly, we have the Mac profile, which if you have your Mac selected, will tell you your Mac's entire stat line. Uh, Mac actions are stuff that each Mac can inherently do, like booting up, disengaging, infrared attacking, mounting, dismounting, or stabilizing. These are full actions, alphabetically sorted. Quick actions, same deal. Quick actions a every Mac can take, alphabetically sorted. Reactions and movement actions as such. So if you want to stabilize, just click that. Click which one you want to do. Secondary effect. And you're good to go. Those are the mech actions. Weapons. Have all your weapons. We will get to them after uh, we're done explaining the menus, how to attack and stuff. Invade. Same deal. Basically an attack. Uh, tech actions. Here will be all your tech actions, like accelerate. The basic ones are already here. Lock on bolts to scan. And your special ones will be here, like accelerate or what have you. Then we got the systems, which are your general systems. In this case, personalizations, custom paint job. Your deployables, such as hex charges, smoke charges, shield systems, turret drones in the drone section, and then in AIs, you got the uh, NHPs you have installed. Same deal. If you click anything, it will tell you what it does, including like heat costs, limited stuff, and uh, so on. Uh, the game is unable to track limited uses, so you'll have to keep track of that yourself. Ideally on a piece of paper or something. That is easiest. Uh, if we click hex charges, we get a little extra menu, and it will ask you if you want to use frag grenades or explosive mines. Both of them do something different. And uh, how to make saves, we'll get to that in a second. Lastly, we've got talents which look like this. Here should be all your talents, such as Walking Armory, which will tell you what that does, uh, Bonded One, and Stormwing One. And again, if you're unsure what any effect is that is described here as a button, you can click on that and it will tell you. And I believe that is it for the general stuff. This is how the buttons work. It's just buttons into more buttons into more buttons and then effects fall out the other end. Now, let us go to the shooting range, which I have prepared. All right, now we're here on the shooting range and uh, we're going to take some shots at these test dummies. But first, we'll have to walk over. The easiest way to do that in Roll20 is to pick up your token and then right click or press Q on your keyboard to create these waypoints. And then you can just let go, put the token down and it will move for you along the waypoints. Uh, you cannot see this movement, but everybody else can. And it looks like that. And it is very helpful to keep track of stuff. Now we're on the shooting range and we've arrayed some practice dummies to shoot at. Let us start with the assault rifle. To select that, we will go to weapons, like so. Select the assault rifle, select the practice dummy. There is no cover in the way, this is a clean shot. No accuracy and difficulty, which you would select here. Hitting, special rule, reliable, if you want to look at that. But this is not a crit, this is a regular hit. So we will click this button for damage. Easy. Let's pretend there would be cover between us and the dummy. Select the assault rifle, select the dummy. Difficulty, let's say one. Still hitting, regular hit, easy. Alrighty. Uh, next up, let's try some melee stuff out. For that, of course, we must uh, 
engage in glorious melee combat by walking up to the dummy. And of course, the GM would adjust the 4 damage to the dummy from the assault rifle. And then we have this heavy melee weapon, select the dummy, misses entirely, unlucky, try again, hits, regular hit again, not a crit, 9 damage, and then this weapon has overpower caliber, so we click the overpower caliber button. So that will be 10 damage, reduced to 9. As such. And that uh, is how single attacks work. Invade, much the same way. Click this button. Click your target. Accuracy difficulty. In this case, it misses. If it had hit, we could have selected fragment signal or special invades from here, like Horus 1 or uh, Neuro Spike, that sort of stuff. That is all the single target abilities we uh, have here, I believe. So let's try an AoE attack. Let's go to this shooting range for that. And weapons, select the rocket propelled grenade. Amount of targets is three. Because uh, as we can see with the blast template, we do get all three. Pretty abysmal regular damage, but uh, the critical, if we can manage one, is pretty high. Uh, so for this attack, the damage is front loaded, and then you click AoE attack roll, select each target in turn, and then it's going to ask you for accuracy difficulty for each. So dummy 4, neutral, dummy 3, neutral, dummy 2, neutral. Hitting number 4, missing everybody else. An unlucky shot, I'd say. Uh, but that is how AoE attacks work. Now, Test Dummy 2 will move forward and take a shot. Over here. And to do so, we will click uh, a regular hit. Sorry, we'll click, uh, whoa, scroll down. Heavy assault rifle, click you. Missing entirely, but the weapon is reliable too. So you must adjust your HP bar by two, down to 14. Or what you can do is you can type in minus two, like so. That will adjust your HP. Additionally, this dust dummy has an underslung grenade launcher. Sorry, a micro missile barrage even. Which looks like this. So, uh, this means we must roll a save or take six damage. A hold save or take six damage. Successful save, half damage. As you can see down here, save target is 10. And next to that, it says hull. Don't worry about the math. There's math in the background going on. <laughs> well, the save target is 10. And uh, the easiest way to roll this check is hull. Click yourself. Any accuracy difficulty, submit. And in this case, we failed, so we must adjust the HP bar further by six. All right. Um, lastly, um, down here, you see, as we talked about the D20, the D3, the D6, the invisible check for invisible enemies to see if you hit or miss. And we have this bird check. If you were on fire uh, at the end of your turn, you don't need to dig through basics, safe checks, engineering, which you can do. Uh, you can also just click burn check, click yourself, and there we go. And of course, a 10 up will remove the burn. And I believe that is all we have for the tutorial. I hope all of this made sense. I hope you're enjoying the tokens, and uh, I hope we're having a good time playing together. I'll see you in a mission. Take it easy, have a good one, and happy lancing.